Hey there, Jake Miller here, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most popular educational technology tools for K-12 teachers, especially in Google Apps for Education Schools or G Suite for Education, or now we're supposed to call it Google Workspace for Education. Regardless, if you use Google at your school, you've probably heard about Google Jamboard. And Google Jamboard has become so popular because it's great for collaboration, which is really nice while in remote learning or concurrent learning or hybrid learning with students all over the place. And it's a great way for them to be able to connect on there. So teachers have been very excited about it. One downside of Jamboard is it doesn't have all of the functionality that we're used to in a tool like Google Slides, and it's a little bit limited in the designs we could bring into it. Now, fortunately, you can add a background to your Google Jamboard frames, uh, and there are a couple different options for how to do it, but my favorite one, because of its convenience and its ease of use, is to use Google Slides to make a background for Google Jamboard. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and then you could find ways to make different templates and different backgrounds to use in class, a whole wide variety of different things that you could potentially use for activities in Jamboard in your class. First step is to open up Google Slides and go to File and then Page Setup and then click on Custom and select 1920 by 1080. That is the perfect dimensions for a Google Slides project for Google Jamboard. Now what I recommend is actually continue to use this same exact slides project and just add a new slide to it for every background you make. That way you have all of your old backgrounds in one place and can modify them and copy them and duplicate them and make in intricate little uh, changes to them to use for different lessons when they're slightly different. And that way, you know that page setup is always set up. But if you plan to use different slides every time, you're going to want to write down that number 1920 by 1080 somewhere so that you could always make sure you're selecting the right number. Once you've done that and then select apply, you'll see your layout of your slide is a little bit different from what you're used to, but otherwise you're ready to start making what your background is going to look like. Now remember, we're just making one slide here for one background. If you want to make multiple slides for multiple backgrounds, that's fine, but you're making them one background at a time. Right now, you can add whatever you want to to this slide. You could add text, you could add images, you can add... Um, shapes, you could add colors, you could add a background, whatever you'd like to be a part of this slide, you could do so, uh, get as crazy or as creative or as decorative as you want, or be as simple and straightforward and, and, and concise as you want to as well. Whatever fits what you're trying to do in your classroom is probably the right thing for you to do. So whatever format works best for you. In mine here, I'm going to add some rectangles to my screen to split it up into different areas for my students to put post-it notes to identify what breakout room they're going to go into. I'll color them differently just to make it look nice on screen but really there's no reason I have to do that it's just a ch choice that I've made here then I'm gonna add some text to label what each rectangle is for I'll say for this one this is for the students who would like to work with me during breakout room time this one here I'll say it's for students who want to work on their own during breakout room time and over here I'll say it's students who want to work with a group and then how about I add a banner to the top of it to tell them give them some instructions it says pick your own breakout room again add whatever you want to this slide Next, I will add some Bitmoji images to, to spice this up a little bit. So I'm going to use the Bitmoji Chrome extension. I'll drag in an image of me in the with the teacher slide. I'll drag in an image of me looking lonely for the on my own slide. And I'll drag in this squad Bitmoji um, picture for the with a group slide. Again, if you don't want to add Bitmojis and you don't want to add pictures, whatever, whatever you do or don't want to add is totally fine. It's your classroom and your style. Do it the way that works best for you. The important step is the next step here, which is go to File and then go to Download and select either PNG or JPG. In this situation, it really doesn't matter all that much which one you choose. So either one is totally fine. But keep in mind, it's only going to download the slide that you're on right now. So if you're making multiple backgrounds, you'll have to go through this process multiple times to get each of those backgrounds out. So you're just downloading downloading the, the slide that you're on currently as an image. Once you've downloaded that, you're going to navigate over to Jamboard and you're going to click the button that says Set Background. Now when that pops up, you'll see a selection of backgrounds that Google has ready for you, a graph paper grid, a notebook paper grid, and things like that that you could potentially use. But what we want is the bottom right button, which is the one for adding your own background. Now when you click on this, you'll see a bunch of different options. The first one's the one we're going to use today. That's uploading an image, taking an image that's on your computer and putting it into your Jamboard background. But you can see you've got some other options. We can click buy URL and uh, take an image from the internet. We can click camera and snap a picture with our webcam right now to be our background, which could be neat for some science experiments and things like that, or maybe snapping a picture of a worksheet or a map or something. Uh, we see Google image search to grab an image off the internet. We see Google Drive to grab something that's in our drive. And we see Google Photos to grab something out of our photos. The only problem with all those is the dimensions of those images might not be right because we set our slide 
decide to be the perfect Jamboard dimensions, but trial and error will show you which ones will work best for you. Now we're gonna upload. Now, normally I would click on browse and find that image, but in this situation, my image is right here at the bottom in the download pop-up that comes up in Google Chrome. So I just can literally drag it from that little download menu at the bottom, that bar, right into this slide and it'll upload it. So if you still have it setting right there, just drag it right in and it'll upload it for you. If you don't have it right there, just click that upload button and you could find it and put it in there. And now you see there's my image in there. Looks just like the slide did, looks nice and clear, but when I click on it, it's all locked in place. The students can't accidentally move these around or intentionally move these around. They can't change the text. They can't do anything like that. They technically could change the background, um, but in this situation, the background is set and locked in place so that unless you change the background itself, you can't accidentally make any changes to it. And now students or teachers or whoever it might be can add post-it notes over this or draw over this or add images over this or add shapes, but the background will stay there. So in my situation, I'm having each of my students grab a uh, post-it note and put their name on the post-it note and drag it to the location that indicates what breakout room format they want for their class period. And then I'll know when I look at it where they're gonna be. Now, keep in mind, I can also duplicate this frame in Jamboard and have multiple frames that look the same exact way in case I wanna do this multiple times. Uh, and I could also back in slides, duplicate that slide and make more um, uh, different versions of this background to use for future templates in Jamboard. Maybe tomorrow I want four breakout rooms, so I'll go make a duplicate of it and make an intricate change. I hope this helps. I would love to hear in the comments down below what you plan to use this for. What kind of background are you going to make and use in Jamboard or what kind have you been using? I'd love to learn from you and have you learn from each other on what ways you're using Jamboard in the classroom, as well as there are other ways we can add background images for Jamboard. If you don't like slides and you have a different way you like to do it, what's your favorite? What way do you prefer to add images into your background? Those comments down there are a great place for us to share together and learn from each other. As as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like below, please subscribe below, and please send this video to a friend who you think you can benefit in their classrooms too. Thank you for what you do. Have a great day.